in the reaction to form an acetylide anion, the hydrogen and carbon bond breaks, and the strong base takes the hydrogen, leaving a carbon with two electrons and a negative charge. This is the acetylide anion, and it also is now a nucleophile, and this acetylide anion slash nucleophile can now undergo reaction with an electrophile. So we're going to be looking at acetylide anions and their reactions with alkyl halides. So this all depends on what type of alkyl halide you have. Here we're going to be messing with primary and methyl alkyl halides. So this primary alkyl halide, the first thing we're going to do is point out the leaving group. And from there we have our nucleophile, which will be the acetylide anion. And that will come and actually attach itself to the primary, the alkyl halide, and the leaving group will come off forming a quick SN2 reaction. The SN2 reaction will be the fastest reaction here, as you'll see in a minute when we go over secondary and tertiary the alkyl highlights. So all that happens here basically is a nucleophilic substitution with the acetylide anions just to form a new carbon carbon in bond. Next, we'll be looking at the acetylide anion reactions with a secondary or tertiary alkyl halide. So, due to steric hindrance, we can only undergo an E2 mechanism here. SN2 mechanisms are not possible, which makes our acetylide anion actually become a base instead of a nucleophile, which means it's going to take an H off of the beta carbon and allow a double bond to form as our halogen leaves as our leaving group. Now, this is a simple E2 reaction, so we'll get three products in total, which means we're getting a lesser yield of carbon-carbon bonds compared to the SN2 reaction. The first product is just a simple alkene with uh, the carbon-carbon double bond. Your next product is your terminal alkyne. The terminal alkyne just forms what you would originally have at the beginning. And lastly, you'll get your leaving group. Your leaving group will be by itself, depending on what you did your, depending on what your solvent was. In the reaction of acetylide anions with epoxides, the oxygen-carbon bond breaks, leaving oxygen with three lone pairs and a negative charge. And the acetylide anion attacks the less substituted carbon with a backside attack. This now undergoes a reaction with water and the oxygen is, on the epoxide is protonated and the hydrogen-oxygen bond on the water is broken. The energy diagram for acetylide anions is exothermic for all reactions. The formation of the acetylide anion is exothermic because the base has a larger pKa value than the terminal acetylide, making it a strong base so it can come in and remove the hydrogen. The reaction of an acetylide anion with an alkyl halide is exothermic because the halogen makes a good leaving group and the acetylide anion is able to come in, remove it, and form a bond. The halogen makes a good leaving group because it is less basic than the carbon, and this makes the carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond more favorable, along with the fact that the carbon no longer has a negative charge or a lone pair, making, also making the products more favored than the reactants. The reaction for acetylide anions and epoxides essentially favors products for the same reason as the alkyl halide reaction, except this time it's the oxygen that makes the better leaving group per se, and the carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond is again favored.